Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how when you finish an interview and you get that response, maybe it's in the interview, maybe it's an email, maybe it's a phone call, and you get that faded response, we're looking for someone with more experience. You don't have the experience we're looking for. We found someone else with more experience. Those are all varieties of, you don't have enough experience, right? And that, and that hurts, especially as a beginner, because it's hard to get that experience. But let me tell you a couple of things that will hopefully help you keep your head up and keep pushing. Number one, typically when people have not really thought through what to say to you, especially as a beginner, they're not sure um, how to respond. It could have been a number of things, and we'll talk about that here in just a moment. It could be a number of things, not necessarily your experience. It could be related to your experience. Uh, typically, we can overcome these things without uh, necessarily having hands-on experience, but we'll talk some about that. And they just don't really know what to say um, because, you know, there, there's a there's a variety of things they could say. But when you're talking to a beginner, it's easier just to give that, hey, it's not it's not you, it's me kind of thing. Hey, we're looking for somebody with a little more experience. It's not that you're not a great candidate. We're just hoping for somebody with a little more experience. Um, and it's an easy, sort of an easy out for an interviewer uh, to not say anything that might offend you or might be uncomfortable for them to say. So number one, keep that in mind. So let's keep, let's keep an open mind. I don't want you to take this at face value. When somebody says you don't have enough experience, ask for more information. Um, because a lot of times it might be something else and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, the second thing I wanna point out is that you got an interview. Maybe you had a few interviews. That means you're doing a lot of things right. That means you're getting the attention of interviewers and it probably means something that happens in that interview goes wrong, okay? And we'll talk about what that could be. So that's not always the case, but if you go to five interviews and everybody says no um, and they don't wanna to go to round two, um, or you're not getting the offer or whatever it is, there's something else there because on paper, they like you. They're on the resume, on the LinkedIn, uh, when you apply for the job and they look over everything, clearly you had enough experience for them to ask you to come interview. But now all of a sudden, after the interview, you don't have enough experience. So that's pretty interesting and we need to keep that in mind, right? On paper, you had enough experience. In the interview, all of a sudden you don't. So that typically means something is going on in that interview that is causing them to backpedal and say, mm, maybe this person doesn't have quite what we're looking for even though we thought that they did. Okay, so keep that in mind. And also keep your head up because you are getting interviews and that is probably the hardest part of this entire thing. You are one step away from the offer. You're probably certified at this point. You've got nice LinkedIn branding, you're networking you've got a good resume, you're applying for jobs, you're getting traction, you got the interview, you didn't get the offer, that was it. All you needed was somebody to say yes, and now you've got the job. Also keep in mind, as an entry level, uh, sort of transitioning into a Salesforce career, you're going to hear no more than you're gonna hear yes, and we have to have emotional maturity, okay? This is really important. If you let that beat you up, if you let those no's get you down, it's gonna be a struggle and I know it hurts, especially when you get to round three of interviews or it's a company you fell in love with already and you just had no reason why you thought they might say no, but they said no and that can hurt. And you've gotta figure out how to stabilize around that and create a foundation around that and there's a lot of reasons for that. So, um, so, so let's jump in. Not enough experience when you get to the interview phase, okay? Specifically, now if you're not getting interviews, it could be true, you don't have enough experience. It's probably uh, your personal branding. Um, if you have a certification, that's plenty, you just need one. Um, so if you've got one cert, you're good to go. If you talk to any recruiter or uh, hiring manager and they say no to somebody during an interview, they didn't say no because they wanted you to have another certification. They said no, because something about you in that interview told them that they were looking for something a little bit different for some reason, okay? It's not the certification. If you went to the interview, clearly they thought you were in good shape. And if it was as simple as yes or no on a certification, they could just tell you, hey, if you get one more certification, we'll take a look at you. That's not what they're doing, okay? So don't just fall back on certifications. Now, 
a lot of times people don't quite know what they mean when they tell you you need more experience. So let's talk about some indicators uh, that may happen in an interview that could make someone think you don't have enough experience. All right, so uh, I've got a quick list here, so you may see me looking down. A lack of confidence, okay? And this can mean a number of things. So you'll see when I shoot a video and I talk about something, I'm looking right here, right? I'm looking you dead in the eye, which is the center of the camera that is recording this video. That's confidence. When you look somebody in the eye, that sort of exudes confidence that even if you're saying, I don't know the answer to that question, but I feel confident that I could research that and figure it out. Here's what I would do. Uh, if I had my computer in front of me right now uh, and I was able to sort of leave this call and go check that out, I might hop on Google. I would look through some Salesforce knowledge articles. And I'm also a part of these other community networks like Salesforce Ohana Slack, Salesforce for Everyone on Facebook. And of course, I have a deep network of individuals who are already Salesforce professionals through the Talent Stacker community or my LinkedIn network. So there's a lot of stuff we can fall back on and answer these questions with confidence. And you can hear how I just told you I don't know to a question, right? That's the worst answer. It's not the worst answer. It could get worse. You could answer it horribly wrong. Um, so that'd probably be the worst thing to do. But saying I don't know is okay, but you still need to have confidence, right? Because if you're sitting here going, um, that's a tough question and I don't quite, uh, I don't, I haven't experienced that exact situation. And I could definitely Google that and try to figure that one out. Um, but yeah, I'd have to get back to you. That is a different level of confidence I just expressed, right? That's really bad. And now imagine you really are in an interview and your voice is already a little shaky and you're a little nervous. And getting one question that throws you off could throw off your entire mental game and you're gonna have to refocus and that's tough to do in the middle of an interview. So we need to always be prepared with that energy and that focus. So the next thing I wanna move into is, uh, oh, so, so a couple of things there. It's uh, with the confidence, it's gonna be eye contact. It's gonna be a big piece of it. It's gonna be talking without ums a lot. I use a lot of ums. Um, <laughs> I just did. Uh, but what you want to do is try to stay away from just a lot of filler words. If you're constantly saying, let me think about that. Um, so what I might do, like that's a lot of just scrambling for time. And you can use things to say, if you need time, say, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to think about that for a moment. Just let them know you need a second to think about it. You don't have to, you know, make a game out of, you know, trying to use filler words and, and get traction mentally. The other thing is a confident voice and a confident posture. Your posture goes a long way in these video meetings, in-person meetings, things like that. They may not notice on a phone call, but if you're in a video meeting and you're sitting up straight and you're looking them dead in the eye, awesome. If you're slunched, uh, sort of hunched over, you're like rocking in your chair because you're nervous and you're moving around a lot, that's really distracting. It shows a lack of confidence. Um, and a lot of times that's what people mean when they say you don't have enough experience. Your resume didn't say you didn't have experience. Your LinkedIn didn't say you didn't have enough experience. What told them you didn't have enough experience was the way you looked at them and the way you talked to them when you're answering these questions. So just keep that in mind. We're not all going to be perfect. Uh, we are going to show weakness and that's okay. Uh, but we can sort of keep these things in mind and it's just practice. It's just practice. Just let your shoulders sit back, sit up straight, talk directly into the camera, strong voice, even when you're saying, I don't know. Now, another thing is stories. And if you've heard me talk about interviewing, you're going to hear me say, it's, to, to me, it's about telling stories, especially early in your career, because you need to show that you have experience. And telling stories means you have experiences, okay? So people without experiences don't have stories to tell. People with experiences have stories to tell. If you're talking to somebody about going boating, and they love talking about boating. I don't boat, by the way, just an example. If you've never been boating before, you won't talk about it, okay? You'll, you might say, oh, that sounds really fun. Like, that'd be a cool thing to do. I've never done that. So you just kind of listen and hear what people are saying. But if you boat a lot, you've probably got a lot of stories. And when somebody finishes their story, you want to start yours. And you're like, oh, yeah, one time when we were at this and we did this, that's how you want to come off, okay? Because people with experience have experiences to share, and those come out in stories. 
okay? So if somebody says, hey, tell me why you, uh, you know, what interests you in working for our company? Um, and you might say, you know, I noticed you sell this product that's really meaningful to me. Uh, I've seen really great reviews on Glassdoor. Everyone I've talked to on LinkedIn, even if you haven't talked to anyone on LinkedIn, everyone I've talked to on LinkedIn loves your company. They love the culture and working for you. And I'm really looking forward to being part of that team and that atmosphere. That sounds like a great fit for me. And I think I'm a great fit for you guys. And this is why. Uh, you know, I noticed, I, I talked to a couple of people and I know you're using this particular aspect of Salesforce. And I've got some experience with that because I worked on a team and we did these things utilizing that functionality. And I really enjoyed that. And I can see myself being in projects with your team working on those types of you know functions. And that would be really fun for me to help your business by utilizing my Salesforce skills. And I would, I would like to do that for you. Um, so it's a lot of that kind of stuff. And it's talking about, you start bringing up the team you worked with and a specific aspect of a project you worked on. Don't wait for them to say, tell me about a project that challenged you and how you overcame that. Why are you waiting on the question? Just give them that. You could, they could come off the bat and say, hey, why are you interested in a Salesforce career? And you could say, I was faced, you know, this one turning point for me was this really challenging project I was working on. And there, there was a group of three of us. And so it was me, I was acting as a, sort of the administrator analyst. And we had a developer on the project uh, who did more of, you know, the, the technical stuff outside of the standard, you know, uh, point and click uh, declarative configuration. And I really enjoyed working on this team, but we had this challenge. And the way that we overcame that was we did X, Y, Z. And by coming together, we were able to do this. We did have to research some knowledge articles. There's some awesome content out there on Trailhead. And by utilizing our resources, we overcame that. And then we did this and it was amazing. And that feeling is what makes me know that Salesforce is for me. It was that challenge made me learn something. It made me focus. It made me work with a team uh, to overcome an obstacle. And when you can work together with other people and overcome obstacles that help employees and help businesses further themselves, nothing better. That's the kind of response you can come with. And now you're already sharing. You didn't make them ask you. You shared your experience right away. Now you're building confidence. You're sharing stories. Now, if you're not sharing stories like that, if you're not talking about things like this, then of course they're gonna think you don't have experience. So there are a lot of people who have experience and they forget to tell stories and they look like they don't have experience, they look like they don't have confidence, but it's just not their style. And that's why we have to practice interviews. A lot of people don't practice interviews. They think I'll just show up, I've got, you know, I've got enough experience, I know what I'm doing, it's an entry level role anyway, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna be fine. No, you need to practice your interviews. Uh, it's not just gonna fall in your lap. This is the last hurdle to getting the job offer. If you don't take this part seriously, you may as well have not done the rest of the prep. You don't need a certification if you're not gonna show up for interviews well. You don't need a good LinkedIn or resume if you're not gonna show up for interviews. You need to show up for the interviews and do it right so you don't miss out. All right, so a, a few other things, communication um, is key. And uh, you know some of this carries over into the, the confidence side of things. But specifically about communication, uh, if it's clear to them that you're not listening, uh, not actively listening, like you're hearing them, you're sort of nodding along, but you're thinking about the next answer that you want to bring up, uh, or if they bring something up maybe in a first round interview, and then they bring it up in a second round interview again, but you don't recall that. Um, so recalling something from a previous interview is a nice tactic to have. Uh, it just shows that you're listening and you're paying attention and you care about their business. Um, not understanding a requirement uh, can sometimes be uh, misconstrued as not listening uh, to them or, or actively listening. Uh, and then positivity and energy. These are the, the ways we sort of communicate uh, is bringing that energy, right? Like if you can't bring energy in a 30 minute interview, how are you going to bring energy 40 hours a week? Okay. So, so that's an important one is especially people who interview a lot and they're still waiting on that first offer. They get bogged down, um, start feeling a little negative. They're, they're worn out by the time they come to the interview. Guess who notices that right away? The person interviewing you, okay? Immediately. They're going to lose interest in the interview. They already know they don't want to go with you. The interview is slowly going to die. 
and then they're going to say, all right, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll reach out to you with, uh, with next steps. Thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by. And it's over and you lost your opportunity and you, people ha- are going to have a thousand excuses not to hire you. Okay. But they want to hire you. They invited you to the interview. They want to hire you. Keep that in mind. And now you need to prove to them that they were right in thinking you were worth inter- uh, bringing to the interview. So listen to them. If you need to take notes, you can even do something like, like I've got notes right here. Um, got a pen and notes and you can let them know that when you start the call, you can say, Hey, uh, I want to make sure that I remember what we're talking about. I want to make sure that I don't uh, forget anything. Uh, and that I'm always, you know, being prepared to answer questions that you're asking. And if I don't understand something, I may follow up later. Uh, so just so you know, I've got some notes, got a pen here. Uh, so if you see me looking down, it's not my phone. Um, I'm not distracted. I'm actually, you know, I might take a few notes here to uh, make sure that I'm, you know, doing everything I can to to make sure I'm prepared and, and giving you what you need from this interview. Uh, so you can let them know and, and bring your notes and bring your pen and, and, and make sure you're ready. And then when you get that second interview, bring the notes from the first interview. Um, but a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, taking notes for those questions so you can follow up with impact and then bringing that positivity that, that energy. I mean, I see so many dull faces in interviews and sometimes it's nervous, like, but nervous is different. Like nervous, you can see it. It's kind of, you know, voice is a little shaky. That's all okay. That happens all the time. That should happen in an interview. Um, so if your voice is a little shaky, don't worry about it. That's what they're seeing from everybody. Now, if you're not listening and answering with impact and you don't sound like this, like you can tell my face personally, this is how I feel my face doesn't show a lot of energy. Like I've got a very like straight sort of serious face, but you can bring it with your voice. You can bring it with your sort of your posture and all these kind of things and just sit up straight and look them in the eye and bring that energy. Because guess what? They want to work with somebody who's positive and energetic and they're ready in the morning at 8 a.m. to get the job done because this is what they want to do. And if you don't look like this is what you want to do, then why would I hire you anyway? Okay. So if you don't want to do it, I'm not going to force you to do it. So show up and get it done. Now, some of you may be thinking, how on earth am I supposed to get experience? And how am I supposed to talk about these stories if they don't exist? Am I supposed to make something up? The answer is no, do not make stuff up. You're going to get called out. What if they answer, ask you a couple of follow-up questions? Like make sure the stories are real. Okay. Um, there's no need to lie. If you're not prepared to land the job, then go prepare to land the job. If you don't have stories to tell, go make stories and create experiences. So how do we do that? Now, a lot of people talk about volunteer projects um, and through Talent Stacker, obviously you get guaranteed volunteer projects and those are managed by project coordinators and you're on a team and we make sure that those are facilitated properly for you. So you're guaranteed the stories, you're guaranteed the experience. Now, some of you may be watching this who are not in the Talent Stacker program and you're, you're wondering, well, what do I do now? You could volunteer and a lot of uh, sort of experts in the industry might say, um, it's really not a good idea. Um, and it's not about you. You're going to get the experience fine for you. It's about the company you're helping and that you might mess up their org or they might not fully understand how to use Salesforce. And then you come in there, and you don't quite know what you're doing, uh, those kind of things. And I understand that. But I would still say, look into volunteering, be cognizant, make sure you're doing the right things, ask the right questions. If you need help, ask for help from the community. Let the person know that you're working with that this is you know, one of the first projects that you've worked on. And so you're going to be taking it a little lightly to make sure that you're giving them the right thing. So you may ask a few uh, extra questions and it may take you a little longer than, say, a paid Salesforce consulting company but you're gonna work with them and make sure you get the job done right. So just focus on doing the right things and not rushing. Um, You can also do personal projects. And these are where you go into a Salesforce playground or a dev org, and you may build out a business that a friend has or a family member has, or maybe it's just a local business and you sort of know how it works. So you wanna try to build it out in a Salesforce org. So imagine uh, somebody has a, a pet grooming service and you may just want to build that out so how do you build that you got to start from scratch like well how do they get new leads into the system and what information would they need to know about the leads maybe it's the person's name maybe a couple of people's names that are the owners the names of the pets how many pets do they have the age of the pets the breeds uh, the colors uh, their names all this kind of different stuff you can build that out Um, 
you can then you're going to need some type of scheduling application. So you're going to need to be able to do uh, how many hours the business is open and scheduling in and making sure you're leaving gaps between one pet grooming and the next pet grooming. So you have 15 minutes maybe to clean up and all that kind of stuff. So you can imagine a lot goes into this. Then we have revenue like getting paid. And does that come in from a credit card, cash, check, maybe uh, some type of other payment like a PayPal or Venmo if they have options like that. So there's a lot that goes into operating a business and you can just think of any local business and start building it out. Now the next level of that is find some other individuals. I would say find individuals that are certified. This is what we do in Talent Stacker. We put together teams of individuals who are already certified. So you could do this on your own. Um, obviously it's not going to be facilitated as cleanly. Um, it may not be a you know a real project, but this is this is a personal project. You work it with a team, and you could do that on your own uh, outside of this. And that's a great way to prepare. So now you're going to meet with people maybe once a week, and start brainstorming on how this pet grooming business would work. Or just an example, and then start putting together requirements and and solutioning for those requirements. And then maybe delegate the work out to different team members, and start really working as a team and really gathering requirements and really implementing solutions and testing and training and all the things that go into it to make it perfect, okay? And now when you show up for interviews, because you've taken the initiative, you're actually gonna have stories to tell. And the truth is in these interviews, nobody cares if it was paid or if it wasn't paid. That doesn't need to come up. It's nobody's business. The point is you worked on a project with other people this was your role. This is what they relied on you for. This is what you were able to do. You implemented Salesforce for a local pet grooming business. Okay. And you can figure out how to frame that and word that so that you're comfortable telling that story. Okay. And that is totally up to you. Some people are going to feel more comfortable saying it was a practice project I did with a, a group of people and we took initiative and really wanted to get this done. Or uh, some people may want to frame that as you know, I really did put together a Salesforce implementation for a pet grooming business. That's not, and to me, that's not a lie. You did. It's just that the pet grooming business didn't know you did it um, and they never utilized it. And you might even bring it to them and say, hey, you might want to think about using Salesforce. I put this together for you. But, um, but either way, you got to build those experiences and be confident telling those stories. And this is the kind of stuff that's going to help you do that. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, I would love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear how you got over some of these obstacles. Uh, if you've already got a job and you were interviewing, I'd love to hear some of the obstacles that you're up against if you're currently interviewing. Uh, but the main thing is I wanna see you in social. I wanna see you on Facebook in groups if you're comfortable on Facebook. I wanna see you on LinkedIn uh, talking about Salesforce if you're comfortable with that. Um, I wanna see you on Ohana Slack. I wanna see you somewhere engaging with other people building yourself up, staying positive, and knowing that all you need is one yes. Everybody else can say no. You need one yes, and your Salesforce career has started.